All right, so now we're going to do completing the square. So this is an extension of solving by taking the square root. So if you want to solve by taking the square root, but the equation is still in trinomial form, you can manipulate the shape of the equation so that you can solve it by taking the square root. So the very first step. The first thing you're going to do is move the constant, or move just the plain number, to the other side of the equal sign. All right? So you're going to use addition or subtraction. So in our example, I've got x squared plus 6x minus 8 equals 0. To get rid of that 8, I'm going to add 8 to both sides. So then I'm just left with x squared plus 6x equals 8. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the number that's in front of the middle term. So I'm going to divide this 6 by 2, then I'm going to square it. I'm going to add that number to both sides. So I'm going to take the 6 and divide by 2 and then square it. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So the 9 gets added to both sides of the equal sign because what I do to one side, I must do to the other. So I get six, or excuse me, x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 17. Now you have a perfect square trinomial over here on the left side. Okay. So to factor that, the two numbers that would multiply to give me 9 but add to give me 6 are 3 and 3. Hence that whole perfect square situation. So I've got x plus 3 squared equals 17. Now you can take the square root of both sides and subtract 3 to solve by completing the square. So some more examples. Your instructions would say complete the square for the following. It could go as far as to say and then solve. So the first thing we do is get rid of the 1 by adding 1 to both sides. Then I'm going to take the 4 and divide by 2 and square it. 2 squared is 4. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So that leaves me with x plus 2 squared and that equals 5. And I went ahead and took the square root of both sides to start solving. So x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 5. Subtract 2 from both sides. And x equals negative 2 plus the square root of 5 or negative 2 minus the square root of 5. Starting here, that was just a matter of solving by taking the square root. For my next example, I'm going to get rid of that 1 by subtracting 1 from both sides. Then I've got x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals negative 1 plus 9 or 8. So when I factor this side, I get x plus 3 and x plus 3 again, or x plus 3 squared. If you'll notice that half of 6 is 3, and that's what always ends up in here. So that works all well and good, except there's a little uh, wrench thrown in the system if we've got a 2 right here, or a 3, or a 4, any other number in front of your x squared. Your first step's still the same. I'm going to get rid of the number out front, or excuse me, the number at the end. So in this case I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So I have 2x squared plus 8x equals negative 5 because I subtracted. The next thing I'm going to do is factor out the 2. So let's pretend that 4 is not here right now. So I factored out the 2 and I'm left with x squared plus 4x and I've still got equals negative 5 because factoring out a 2 doesn't change the value. Would I, at that point, I've got to take half of that middle number, divide it by 2, and square it. So that's 4. But before I go adding a number over here, I have to take the 4, multiply it times 2, because that's technically what I've added to this side. That's the number I add to this side. So I bring down that 2 and I get x plus 2 squared, and that equals 3. Same kind of deal over here. I'm going to add, subtract the 1 from both sides, then I'm going to factor out that 3. And I'm left with x squared minus 4x, and then the 3 is on the outside. I'm going to take half of the 4, which is 2, and square it, which is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. That's really what I've added to this side and what I should have added to the other side, but I see my mistake. So instead of adding 4, I should have added 12. Let's see if I can fix that. This should be 12. So I get negative 1 plus 12, which is 11. Now I can divide by that 3 and take the square root of both sides in order to solve. 